Hello there. Welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all 53 of the rides and attractions found at the Universal Orlando Resort. We will first begin with the original Universal Studios Florida and then move on to Universal's Islands of Adventure. I have included chapters for all the different lands in both of the parks, so if you want to skip to one particular area of either park, this should make it easier for you. Once you've made your way through the entrance of Universal Studios Florida, you'll be entering straight into the first area of the park, Production Central. Made to look like a film set, most of the attractions are housed within sound stages. The first attraction you will come to is Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. This is a simulator ride that transforms you into minions before heading on an adventure through many different scenes. The ride includes two pre-shows in Gru's living room and then laboratory. You will exit through super silly stuff where you will have a wide selection of Despicable Me merchandise. This attraction used to be home to Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast and before that the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera. Opposite Minion Mayhem used to be the popular show Shrek 4D, but this closed earlier in the year and will be replaced by another Minion themed attraction which is rumoured to open in 2023. The next attraction in Production Central is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, a steel roller coaster featuring a loop and several helixes. This coaster allows its riders to choose from a list of 30 songs to listen to during the ride. You can choose from the likes of Black Eyed Peas, Beastie Boys and many more. Also, if you hold down on the ride's logo for around 10 seconds, you can access a secret playlist but you will need to enter a three digit code for a particular song. Here are some of my favorites, but a full list can be found in a link in the description box below. The final attraction in Production Central is Transformers The Ride 3D. If this 3D dark ride feels familiar, then you are not mistaken, as it uses the same ride system as the popular Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man over in Islands of Adventure. You team up with Optimus Prime as you battle against the Decepticons in many exciting show scenes featuring a variety of effects. You can also meet Megatron, Bumblebee or Optimus Prime in a meet and greet in an area close to the ride building throughout the day. As you pass the amphitheater which hosts shows and events throughout the year, you'll be entering the park's next area, New York. The first attraction you come to is one of the newest in the park, Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. Opening in 2017, this is a 3D motion simulator ride which replaced Twister Ride It Out. The queue line features displays about the history of The Tonight Show as well as a few interactive games for guests to try before entering the pre-show. There are also regular performances by the Barbershop Quartet, the Ragtime Gals, and Hashtag Panda, both of which feature on The Tonight Show as well as making appearances throughout the ride. Once you go through to the main stage area, you will have a race with Jimmy Fallon while seeing many of the famous landmarks around New York City. As you walk towards the lagoon, you will come to the next attraction, Revenge of the Mummy. This is an indoor roller coaster ride based on the Mummy franchise. The ride is very meta as you enter the film set of the next Mummy installment. The queue and pre-show features interviews with some of the cast, including Brendan Fraser playing himself. It explains that the curse from the movie is actually real, with Brendan being the only cast member not believing, which has dire consequences later on in the ride. The roller coaster has the ability to move from scene to scene at an incredible pace and features some amazing effects throughout. This ride replaced the awesome King Kong ride Confrontation in 2004 but has gone on to being a crowd favourite over the years. Be sure to ride this amazing attraction on your next visit to Universal Studios Florida. Before we move on to the next area, I have to mention the long-running Blues Brothers show that has actually been performing in the New York area since 1991. Make sure you check show times as you enter the park so you don't miss this amazing musical stage show that features many of the hit songs from the classic movie. We now move on to San Francisco, where you can become one of the family on Fast and Furious Supercharge. The pre-show and queue line sees you enter a garage that features many of the franchise's amazing vehicles. You then climb aboard a party bus as this dark ride takes you on an exciting adventure with all the cast from the Fast and Furious movies. Let's hope that it doesn't end in a disaster. 
due to the popularity of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter over in Islands of Adventure, this next area was added to Universal Studios Florida in 2014, making it the newest section in the park. As you walk along a regular London street, you can find the hidden entrance that will take you to Diagon Alley, featuring an amazing selection of shops, restaurants and attractions. Before you enter Diagon Alley, you can catch the Hogwarts Express that will take you directly to Hogsmeade over in Universal Orlando's other park, Islands of Adventure. Designed to look like London's King's Cross Station, you will enter platform 9 and 3 quarters as you become part of the story. You will encounter characters from the popular Harry Potter series including Hagrid, Dementors and of course Ron, Hermione and Harry before seeing the beautiful Hogwarts and arriving in Hogsmeade. It is the perfect way to travel between the two parks but you will need a two park ticket to ride this attraction. Within Diagon Alley, there are a few exciting stage shows, including a puppet show enacting stories from the tales of Beedle the Bard, and a live musical performance by Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees, as well as a load of unique wizarding stores and dining locations. The flagship attraction in Diagon Alley is Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. This is a 3D motion based steel roller coaster dark ride that is based around the wizarding bank Gringotts. You enter the bank surrounded by amazing audio animatronic goblins that interact with the guests before joining Harry Potter and the gang as you head down into the vaults and search for one of Voldemort's horcruxes. You'll meet many different characters as well as some magical creatures seen throughout the attraction. This is a great attraction with many exciting elements and is a must for any fan of the Harry Potter franchise. We now move on to what used to be one of the largest areas of the park, but is now the smallest. World Expo only houses one attraction, Men in Black Alien Attack. This is an interactive shooting dark ride which begins as a training exercise before an announcement of an alien prison ship crash landing in New York where you are instantly sent to battle the many different audio animatronic aliens before they cause too much damage. This is a great attraction for you to battle for the highest score against your family and friends to become the best recruit. Further around the lagoon, you will come to Springfield, the home of The Simpsons. You can have a beer in Moe's Tavern, grab some food in Krusty Burgers, and see a host of characters throughout this amazing land. The main attraction is The Simpsons Ride, a huge simulator ride that replaced the Back to the Future attraction in 2008. On the ride, you'll be introduced to a cartoon theme park called Krusty Land. However, Sideshow Bob is loose from prison and seeks revenge on Krusty and The Simpsons family by taking over Krusty Land and destroying the ride. On this six minute ride, you'll recognize plenty of popular Simpsons characters as you try to escape from Sideshow Bob's demolition attempts. The ride utilizes the huge IMAX screens and ride cars from the previous attraction. Near the entrance of the ride, Krusty Land Carnival Games gives you the chance to win a prize at the various Midway stations. In 2013, Springfield was expanded, which included a new aerial carousel attraction called Kang and Kudos' Twirl and Hurl. This is based on the aliens that feature in the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes. You will ride a UFO and spin past many interactive characters as you join the aliens in destroying Springfield. In 2019, Disney bought 21st Century Fox, the company that produces The Simpsons, but Universal has a licensing deal until at least 2028, so it is unknown whether Springfield will remain in the future. The next area is Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone. This land features two play areas as well as a few attractions and shows. Curious George Goes to Town is a water play area that is a great way for younger guests to cool down in the hot weather. And it also includes an interactive area where you can shoot foam balls out of cannons. The other play area is Fivel's Playland. This is based on the animated film An American Tale and includes a huge climbing spider web, walkways and a 200 foot long water boat slide. Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster is a family roller coaster that was actually the first ever coaster built on the Universal Orlando Resort. Join Woody as you take a wild train ride through his nut factory, which gives you some great views of Kid Zone and the surrounding areas. 
in 2021, the new DreamWorks destination was added to the area, which is a stage show and meet and greet, where you can see various characters from DreamWorks animation, including Kung Fu Panda, Trolls, Madagascar, and Shrek. Near the entrance to KidZone is the stage show Animal Actors on Location. This is a 20 minute live show featuring handlers with trained animals from movies and TV shows, performing various tricks and showcasing their talents. The final attraction in KidZone is the only opening day attraction left in the park. It's the classic dark ride E.T. Adventure. This attraction was created by Universal along with the movie's director Steven Spielberg, who you can see before entering the indoor queue line giving information about the ride. As you enter inside, you'll be transported to a heavily forested area reminiscent of the film, with many props and easter eggs lying around. You'll then sit on a bicycle themed ride vehicle as you are tasked to return E.T. to his home planet. You'll perform the classic scene as you fly over the police car before going to the green planet and seeing all of E.T.'s family and friends before returning home. This is a quintessential universal attraction and I hope it remains in the park for years to come. We now come to the final area in the park, Hollywood. Starting with Universal's Horror Makeup Show, a live stage show themed as a behind the scenes presentation of special effects used in horror films. A pre-show allows guests to walk through and view various set pieces and props from various films such as the Universal Classic Monster series and Hellboy 2. This show has some audience participation and can be very funny as the hosts demonstrate how different effects are used in the movies. This show is very easy to miss but I highly recommend you check it out. Near to Universal's horror makeup show, you can see the all new live action musical show Marilyn and the Diamond Bellas. You can see the classic Hollywood actress Marilyn Monroe and her backup dancers as they perform songs in the middle of the street. You can also see a host of other classic characters in Hollywood throughout the day. Look out for Betty Boop, Doc Brown, Scooby Doo and the gang, as well as some of the characters from Universal's Superstar Parade. The final attraction in Hollywood is the Bourne Stuntacular, a live action stunt stage show based on the Jason Bourne film series. This uses a mixture of moving set pieces and screens to travel across three continents and includes chase scenes, fist fights and a bunch of parkour. If you're a fan of the Bourne series or stunts in general, you'll be impressed by the stunt performers and the state of the art technology used throughout the show. The show opened in 2020 and of course replaced the amazing Terminator 2 3D show, but I think is a worthy replacement. Universal Studio Florida also has a daytime parade and a nighttime show. Universal's Superstar Parade starts next to Louis' Italian restaurant in New York, wraps down through Production Central, moves through Hollywood and then exits near to the Horror Makeup Show Theatre. You'll be able to see characters from Despicable Me, Spongebob Squarepants, The Secret Life of Pets, and Dora the Explorer. Make sure you grab a Showtime's leaflet as you enter the park so you won't miss out on this amazing parade. Universal Orlando's cinematic celebration is the new Nighttime Lagoon Show in Universal's Central Park that can accommodate up to 6,500 guests. The show features 40 foot panoramic water curtains used as projection screens, fireworks, projection mapping onto surrounding buildings and over 120 water fountains. Some of the scenes depicted include footage from film franchises such as Jurassic World, The Fast and the Furious and Harry Potter. This is a great show and the perfect way to wrap up your day at Universal Studios Florida. Before we take a look at the rides and attractions in Universal's Islands of Adventure, if you haven't already booked your next Universal trip, then why not check out Undercover Tourist for some great deals on Universal and Disney hotels and tickets. And if you're watching from the UK, take a look at the amazing Universal and Disney packages that Virgin Holidays are offering right now. Both my affiliate links are in the description box below, so go check it out to see how much you could save on your next Orlando vacation. You enter Universal's Islands of Adventure into the Port of Entry Island, which along with guest services is also comprised of many dining and shopping locations. You will also be able to find the recognizable Pharaoh's Lighthouse that each night helps to guide visitors to the exit of the park. As you work your way anti-clockwise around the park, the next island you come to is Seuss Landing, which is of course based on the works of the popular author Dr. Seuss. 
The first attraction you'll see is If I Ran the Zoo, an interactive playground inspired by Gerald McGrew's Unusual Zoo. Younger visitors will be able to enjoy discovering all the strange and wonderful animals alongside all the slides, caves, and wet play area. Next is the flagship attraction of this island, the Cat in the Hat. This is a fun dark ride bringing to life the story of the popular book through a mixture of large sets, screens, and audio animatronics. Will the mess created by the cat and the things be cleaned up before mum returns? Find out on this great attraction that is one of the most popular children's rides in the park. Right next to the cat in the hat is the spinning attraction, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, which is based on the book of the same name. You'll be able to control your own fish as you try to avoid the water sprays by listening carefully to the onboard riddle. Throughout the day, you'll be able to enjoy the musical show, Oh, The Stories You'll Hear, featuring all your favorite Dr. Seuss characters like The Grinch, The Lorax, Cat in the Hat, and Sam I Am. A storyteller will read one of the popular books as the characters reenact the stories. This is a great show and a nice change of pace from the hustle and bustle of the park. Next is the Carousu Cell, a themed carousel where you'll be able to ride on some of the creatures found in the popular works of Dr. Seuss. The final attraction in Seuss Landing is the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride, which is an elevated monorail that gives a tour around Seuss Landing. There are two ride tracks, one will tell the stories of the Sneetches, and the other will be more of a compilation of all Dr. Seuss's books. This is a great relaxing ride while taking in all the amazing sights and sounds of Seuss Landing. The island also features lots of unique dining locations, including the amazing Circus McGurkus restaurant and Green Eggs and Ham Cafe. The next island is the Lost Continent, which is themed to ancient myths and legends. It is divided into two sections, an ancient Arabian marketplace called Simbad's Bazaar and the Atlantis-themed Lost City. There was also a third section called Merlin Wood with a medieval theme, but the majority of that area was taken when the Wizarding World of Harry Potter was added to the park in 2010. You'll be able to find the Mystic Fountain in Simbad's Bazaar, an interactive attraction that tells jokes and will try to outwit anyone that tries to interact with it. Be careful as it has the power to splash anyone that it deems worthy. The only other attraction in the Lost Continent comes in the form of a special effects stage show, Poseidon's Fury. Join Poseidon as he takes on the evil Lord Darkanon with the use of some amazing fire and water effects. This show has just recently reopened after a lengthy closure due to refurbishment. Go check out this unique attraction the next time you visit Universal's Islands of Adventure. The Lost Continent is also home to Mythos, which is one of the best restaurants on Universal property. This full-service restaurant offers Mediterranean, Asian, and American cuisine in a beautiful setting and has won many Best Theme Park Restaurant Awards. We now move on to the most popular island in the park, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. When it was first announced in 2007 that Universal had struck a deal with Warner Brothers and J.K. Rowling to bring the magical world to life, the Harry Potter fandom went crazy. And when it opened in 2010, it exceeded everyone's expectations. Hogsmeade is so popular that it has gone on to be added to the Hollywood, Japan, and the newly built Beijing parks. And Diagon Alley, a totally new and unique Wizarding World, has been added right next door in Universal Studios Florida. This leads me to the first attraction, Hogwarts Express. Not only does this train transport visitors between the two parks, it also includes a unique storyline on both the journeys. As you head from Hogsmeade Station to King's Cross Station over in Universal Studios Florida, you'll encounter centaurs in the Forbidden Forest, the spooky Malfoy Mansion, and spot the night bus as it squeezes between buildings when you arrive in London. It is the perfect way to travel between the two parks, but you will need a two-park ticket to ride this attraction. The main attraction in this land is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a motion-based dark ride. The queue line is fantastically themed to the hallways and rooms within Hogwarts, which feels like an attraction within itself. The ride will explore many different recognizable scenes from the books and films, and features a plethora of Harry Potter characters and creatures in a mixture of screens, audio animatronics, and special effects. This is a fantastic attraction that always has a long wait, so I would suggest either investing in an express pass or joining the single rider line to bring your wait time down. 
as I mentioned before, some of the Lost Continent Island was taken over by the addition of the Wizarding World, so some of the attractions have been redesigned or rethemed to fit the Harry Potter theme. The first is the Flight of the Hippogriff, which used to be known as the Flying Unicorn. This is a junior outdoor roller coaster where Hagrid will teach visitors how to fly a hippogriff. You will see plenty of theming throughout, including Hagrid's hut and the Forbidden Forest, as well as some great views of all the Wizarding World. In 2019, Hagrid's Magical Creatures motorbike adventure opened in Hogsmeade. It was the former location of the old Dueling Dragons roller coasters, which were renamed and rethemed to Dragon Challenge when the Wizarding World opened in 2010. But due to some on-ride injuries, the dueling aspect was removed entirely, which took away a lot of the draw of the attraction. It closed in 2017 and was demolished to make way for the new coaster. Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure has seven separate launches, which makes it the roller coaster with the most launches in the world. It is also nearly a mile long, making it the longest coaster in Florida, and it had a cost of over $300 million, which makes it the most expensive roller coaster ever created. You'll join Hagrid on an adventure with lots of magical creatures on display. You'll see Fluffy, the three-headed dog, some Cornish pixies, a centaur, and many more. This is a must ride in Islands of Adventure, so make sure you get here early. Hogsmeade also features plenty of shopping and dining locations. You can buy a wand in Ollivander's, chug on some butter beer in the Three Broomsticks, or try on some robes in Dervish and Bangs. The possibilities are endless. Throughout the day, you can watch one of the two shows. Frog Choir is an a cappella performance of some Hogwarts students and their frogs, as they sing familiar wizarding songs and the Triwizard Spirit Rally sees the students of Hogwarts, Boobatons, and Durmstrang perform dances to cheer on their classmates. Also, there are three different nighttime projection shows that light up the beautiful Hogwarts Castle throughout the year. The Nighttime Lights at Hogwarts Castle is the main show that celebrates the four houses of Hogwarts backed by the legendary John Williams musical score. The Dark Arts at Hogwarts Castle sees Voldemort, Death Eaters, and a host of other cruel legions take over the Wizarding School, which begins in the autumn and over Halloween. And then in the winter months, the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Castle brings ghosts singing Christmas carols, students building snowmen, and other wintry offerings. Hogsmeade has been a huge success for good reason, and even if you're a casual Harry Potter fan, you can't help but feel the magic in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. The next island is Jurassic Park, which is set after the events of the first film, where the park is functioning and includes thrill rides and discovery-based displays, along with the popular dinosaur exhibits. We will begin with the classic Jurassic Park River Adventure, where you will go on a boat tour through the herbivore reserve before the boat is knocked off course, causing riders to come face to face with multiple carnivores, including a T-Rex. There is a huge drop at the end of the ride, and you will most likely get wet, but but in the hot Florida sun, that is not too much of a problem. Next is Camp Jurassic, a huge play area for younger visitors to explore. They'll have lots of fun with the slides, climbing nets, water cannons, and much more. Within Camp Jurassic, there is another attraction, Pteranodon Flyers, a suspended roller coaster that flies you around Camp Jurassic at a nice relaxing pace, giving you an awesome vantage point of Jurassic Park and other areas of Islands of Adventure. This is aimed at younger guests, so add Adults can only ride this attraction if they accompany a rider under 56 inches. This ride can easily get long wait times, so you can make use of a virtual line through the Universal app, where you can reserve a place and return at a later time. While you wait, you might want to check out the Jurassic Park Discovery Center, where you can find a restaurant as well as an interactive play area that allows visitors to learn through various activities and mini shows, including a small laboratory where guests can watch a baby Velociraptor hatch from an egg. Although the land is based on Jurassic Park, all the new attractions that have been added over the last few years have Jurassic World theming, but Universal have yet to confirm if the whole island will be rethemed. You can get up close and personal with Owen Grady's Raptor Blue in the Raptor Encounter. This is the perfect opportunity for you to get a photo with a popular dino.
The final attraction in Jurassic Park is the newest in the whole of the Universal Orlando Resort, the amazing Jurassic World Velocicoaster. This launch roller coaster features two high speed launches, a signature 155 foot tall top hat, four inversions, including the beautiful Heartline Roll, and reaches a maximum speed of 70 miles an hour. This is an exhilarating experience and has quickly become a favorite in the coaster community. Along with being a great coaster, it also also features perfect theming with the velociraptors being present throughout the queue and the ride. This ride is definitely not for the faint hearted so if you enjoy thrills make sure you ride the Velocicoaster. We now go from the newest attraction to the newest area in the park, Skull Island. This is the smallest area as it features just the one attraction, Skull Island Reign of Kong. This has a fantastically themed queue line where you'll be warned by a shamaness as well as checking out some of the creatures from the island. You will grab some 3D glasses before boarding a huge safari truck as an audio animatronic tour guide takes you to a giant temple to look for a giant ape. The indoor section uses screens either side of the vehicle which gives the illusion of actually being transported to Skull Island, surrounded by all the dinosaurs, huge bugs and of course King Kong himself as they battle it out throughout the attraction. At the end of the ride you'll meet the huge animatronic of Kong, but don't get too close as he may not be in a good mood. The next island is Toon Lagoon that feature three water-based attractions. The first being Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls, a classic log flume ride based on the Canadian Mountie from the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. The ride system contains three drops, the last and steepest of which is 75 feet. It is a hybrid flume coaster that utilizes steel track to not only shoot guest filled logs down the final drop, but under the water surface and over a bunny hill. Of course, you're likely to get soaked, but not as much as our next attraction, Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges. This is a river rafting water ride based on everyone's favorite sailor, Popeye. You will need to help him save olive oil from Bluto whilst careening through the unpredictably rapid waters. You will get very wet on this attraction, so I would suggest wearing a rain mac or riding this attraction earlier in the day to give you a chance to dry off in the hot sun. To add insult to injury, the final attraction in Toon Lagoon is Me Ship the Olive, a playground for children themed to Popeye's ship, featuring guest operated water sprayers that can further soak those riding Popeye and Bluto's build wrap barges. So we now come to the final area of Islands of Adventure, Marvel Superhero Island. And I know you're thinking, isn't Marvel owned by Disney? Well, yes, but the contract between Universal and Marvel predates Disney's purchase of Marvel in 2009. That's why Disney isn't allowed to use the Marvel name within their parks. The island features the characters in their comic book style, which helps to separate them from the MCU actors that most visitors are probably familiar with. The first attraction that you'll come to is The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, which is my favorite ride in the whole of the Universal Orlando Resort. This dark ride has a great mixture of 3D screens, practical sets and effects, as well as a really fun and exciting storyline featuring lots of Spider-Man villains. The same ride system has gone on to be used for Transformers The Ride over in Universal Studios Florida and the newly opened Jurassic World Adventure in Universal Studios Beijing, which just goes to show the popularity of this ride. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man has also won many awards including Best Dark Ride for 12 years in a row at the Golden Ticket Awards. There is a reason why many people love to ride this attraction, so make sure you join Spider-Man the next time you visit Universal's Islands of Adventure. Close to the exit of The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, you will get the chance to meet your favorite Marvel hero or villain in a special meet and greet throughout the day. You'll be able to meet Captain America, Doctor Doom, the Green Goblin, some of the X-Men and of course Spider-Man. Talking about Doctor Doom, you can test your fears over on Doctor Doom's Fearful. This space shot ride will launch riders up and down the drop tower as Doctor Doom harvests your fear to take over the world. If you're not too scared, you'll be able to see some amazing views of Islands of Adventure and the whole of the Universal Orlando Resort. Next is Storm Force Acceleration, a teacup ride where you team up with Storm, the weather controlling member of the X-Men, and Professor X 
as you take on that arch enemy Magneto. The faster you spin, the more energy you can create to defeat the evil mastermind. The last attraction, and by no means the least, is the Incredible Hulk Coaster. This is probably the most recognizable ride in the park due to its size and its distinctive green track. This huge launch roller coaster will see General Ross perform gamma radiation experiments on subjects to try and transform them into Hulk-like creatures. The coaster features seven inversions and went through a hefty refurbishment in 2016 that included new tracks and a complete new storyline. This is is a great coaster packed with thrills and dare I say it incredible so that wraps up all the entertainment that is offered at the Universal Orlando Resort. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as I continue to make guides for all the Universal and Disney resorts around the world. And like I said, go check out my affiliate links for UndercoverTourist.com and Virgin Holidays for some amazing Disney packages if you're traveling from the UK. Let me know your favorite attractions at Universal Orlando in a comment down below. And why not check out this guide video Video for the original Universal Studios Hollywood over in Los Angeles, California. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.